there are three major plant divisions, uvascular, nonvascular, and seed plants. First, we have the nonvascular plants, also called the bryophytes. Generally speaking with plants, this states bryophytes do not have true exylum or phloem, which are types of vascular tissue. When people speak about bryophytes, they are usually talking about moss. Next, we have the vascular plants. Vascular plants then get divided based on whether or not they have seeds. When they have no seeds, they are what we can call ferns. Ferns are the representative group for the seedless vascular plants, much in the same way moss are the model group for the bryophytes. If the vascular plant had a seed, it could be either a gymnosperm or an angiosperm. The gymnosperms have an exposed seed which means their ovule is not contained within any heavily fortified material like a fruit. Their seeds are more exposed than the angiosperms. An example of a gymnosperm would be a pine tree that we see here, with their seeds that were either their seeds are located just under the scales of their of certain pine cones, their ovulate cones. In the angiosperms, the flowering plants, they have their seeds protected by some sort of fruit structure that develops from their ovum when it gets fertilized. First, we will, we will state some facts about what makes something a plant. All plants are autotrophic, meaning plants are able to utilize sunlight in order to produce their own food. Their cell walls are made of cellulose, which is a durable polysaccharide used to support the plant cell's shape. Excess sugar made in the plant is stored as starch. Plants also have a haplodiplontic life cycle, and what this means is basically the plant has a haplontic, or one end stage, during its life. This stage is called the gametophyte, and it has a diplontic stage that is called the sporophyte. Both of these stages are multicellular. Alternation of generation literally just states one generation gives rise to the next. Or I should say the gametophyte stage of the plant will make the sporophyte, and the sporophyte will eventually make another gametophyte. Plants are made of three organ types, the roots, shoots, and leaves. Tissues develop from meristems, which are areas on a plant that cause growth. The type of growth is dependent on the type of meristem. For instance, we can have lateral meristems or apical meristems. Before we begin, I should mention some things about the gametophytes and sporophytes. The size of the gametophyte changes depending on the plant group we're talking about. In moss, for example, the gametophyte is dominant. This means the gametophyte is most likely larger, more visible, and lasts a lot longer in the plant's life cycle than the sporophyte does. And the sporophyte is the smaller, more dependent on the gametophyte for survival. The sporophyte would have to get all of its nutrients from the gametophyte. But in the case of vascular plants, the sporophyte is always dominant instead of the gametophyte. The gametophyte gets incredibly reduced in, for example, the angiosperms, where their gametophyte can be less than three cells in size. Their sporophyte instead is the larger, more noticeable stage of the plant. In the vascular plants, the gametophyte would be dependent on the sporophyte for survival instead of, well, instead of the other way around in the moss. Now let's look at some general features for the sporophytes and gametophytes. Both stages are multicellular. The sporophytes are the diplontic or 2N stage. Most sporophytes have vascular tissue, exylum, and phloem. They have sporangia, that are the structures the plant makes that produces its spores. The spores are haplontic, which means the 2N or diploid sporophyte needs to make these spores by meiosis in order to make them haploid. It does all of this inside its sporangium structure that, that we can see over here in this image. The gametophyte is the haploid stage. All gametophytes do not have any vascular tissue, so no exylum or phloem. It has gametangia, that are structures on the gametophyte that produce the gametes. The male version of the gametangium is called the antheridium, and the female version is called the archegonium. So as we can see in this image, everything down here is the gametophyte, and the long extension we see running up is the sporophyte. Its sole purpose in moss is just to produce its spores so that it can continue its life cycle.